One year too late, President Biden is finally traveling to East Palestine, Ohio. This week, one year after a Norfolk Southern train derailed there, spilling a slew of hazardous chemicals into the surrounding environment. The White House said this weekend that the president will travel there to ensure that state and local officials hold Norfolk Southern accountable. East Palestine residents are still feeling the effects of the contamination one year after the spill. News Nation reporter Evan Lambert has been awarded more than $80,000 to settle a lawsuit over his arrest in East Palestine at a news oh, yeah. conference last year. Hmm. So obviously we've said for a while that he should have visited and he really missed an opportunity when Trump did travel there and Biden chose not to. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some way, Republicans were able to claim this as their issue, even though Trump's own policies were more um, railroad friendly than, uh, than he was letting out to be. Yes, and in fact, kind of deregulatory moves that happened under during the Trump administration as the lever uh, covered have a arguably close causal relationship to the kind of brakes not being installed on the train that would have averted this kind of a tragedy and on and on and on. Um, so I don't think there's really any w winners here, but Trump was able to claim a victory by at least showing up and making the right motions with his mouth. Biden, though he was president at the time, declined to act in this way. It even took uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg a mm -hmm. while to get there himself, and certainly it didn't cause the same kind of media hubbub as you know a popular former president showing up um, and kind of glad handing in the way that he is pretty good at. I, I will say about Donald Trump, and so the, this raises some questions about why this is happening and why now especially on the heels of what was one of Joe Biden's all-time worst media days last Friday when he got hit um, with his news that the reason that he basically wasn't being asked to be <laughs> accountable for the mishandling of classified documents was because he was seen to be elderly old and forgetful and not all there. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Uh, and then in, an, in a press conference to remediate that perception, ended up making another gaffe confusing one world leader for another. Now, is this an attempt by the administration to say, hey, look, he can be out and about, he can do events, um, he can be out in the public, he can campaign, and is it going to work? Yeah, I'm reading a lot more. We already talked today about the Biden um, age issues, but there's, uh, frankly, there's more to discuss. Even since we started talking today, more people have weighed in. I, I caught this article by Jonathan Chade, who writes for New York Magazine, who I do, frankly, like a lot of his takes. Um, he's very much in the kind of anti-cancel culture, anti-wokeness stuff. But saying that, well, conceding, like, well, even if Joe Biden's utterly, you know, mentally incapable, is that so bad? Because he can have his advisors to make all his decisions. And, like, he even alludes to the Reagan issue, where, you know, people allege that Reagan was already suffering from right. Alzheimer's at the end of his term. But that, that shouldn't matter, I guess, which is, I don't, I don't think that is, is that particularly to persuasive you? to exactly. anyone. Um, I'm seeing this Politico article that says uh, Democrats might need a plan B, here's what it would look like, which does admit what I've said, which is that there can be no Biden replacement unless Biden himself agrees to it. He is going into the convention with the delegates. There's, it's too late for anything to be done in terms of the process, so he would have to decide to step aside, and then there could actually be a showdown at the convention, likely involving Kamala Harris, who has said, um, Fox reports that she said in just, just recently in a Wall Street Journal interview that she is ready to serve if, uh, if it's come to that. Of course, she is not the most popular political figure herself. No, but you did see polls that show that generic Democrat beat Donald Trump, and yeah. it was really Biden who had this um, yeah. these unique vulnerabilities. Now, other people's unique vulnerabilities emerge the second that they're the ones right. in the hot seats. Uh, hot seats. So I wouldn't, you know, be overly confident about Kamala Harris. But honestly, at this point, given Biden's unfavorables and frankly just the reality of how unable he seems to present himself to the public. It seems like there's frankly upside even to having Kamala Harris there in his stead. We talked in an earlier segment about how few uh, interviews Joe Biden has done as compared to Donald Trump or uh, Barack Obama and their presidencies. And it's hard to imagine how he's going to get through this campaign se season, not just advocating for himself, but presenting a vision 
of what the Democratic Party is supposed to stand for as its top spokesperson if he can't confidently get out in front of the cameras and make that pitch. I'm also curious as to whether or not some of the weird mixed messaging that's coming out around his handling of Israel Gaza, which obviously has flagged mm -hmm. him as well, is a result of him not really taking this issue by the reins. Progressives for months now have been pointing out other historical examples of the United States or, uh, in one case, Thatcher, basically picking up the phone and saying, you've got to stop Israel when there have been excessive civilian casualties as a consequence of one or another of the, their bombardments. And people have been asking the question, well, why isn't Joe Biden doing something? Why is he just floating these statements that say, hey, I don't like what Putin is doing. Oh, he, Biden used the F word in response mm -hmm. to Putin behind closed doors. Oh, it sounds like he's really unhappy. Why is that all we're getting from him instead of getting this moment we're all imagining, which has happened in, in, in the historical record of the United American president picking up the phone and saying, no, you have to stop now. Well, maybe it is not this ideological issue the way that many of us have presumed, or maybe it's a mix of it being an ideological commitment that he has to Israel being able to do whatever it wants, but also not having the wherewithal in the confidence and the strength and the cognitive and analytical ability to really make that argument and to yeah. stand up to Netanyahu. Yeah, that's what people are going to be wondering. Um, I saw some people were, were circulating on social media um, this Time magazine cover from uh, 1996 when Bob Dole was a Republican candidate that said, like, the cover says, is he too old to be president? Mm. He was 73 at the time. Mm. Biden's 81. Yeah. Or, I mean, Reagan was 73 when he ran for his second term. That was yeah. considered, um, that was an open question. Now, obviously, Trump, 77. So again, it's a lot of, it's a lot of older figures. But I also do think it's not just age, right? It's not. Like... Uh, well, Bernie Sanders is not yeah. fumbling all over the place as he's doing late night hits as he's been doing all this week. You know, Nancy Pelosi and all right. you know, I mean, Chuck people, Grassley is 800 years old and I haven't seen him. Exactly. Make, make there are people yet. who it's, I do no, not I know, like, but, to be clear, like Nancy Pelosi, whose politics yeah. are not my own, who I'm not going to make the case that they're too old to be president. I have substantive arguments yeah. as to why Nancy Pelosi shouldn't be president. But Joe Biden specifically in a world of older people and a Congress filled with octogenarians is not doing well. I can't imagine him. I mean, I assume we're going to have them still, right? The debates, the, the, the Trump-Biden debates. But if I were his handlers, I'd be terrified to let him on stage, just period. He can't get through these interviews, How can, which, which are not, sometimes these interviews aren't particularly adversarial. Sometimes the press no. is helping him because it's awkward. They want him to be able to finish his, his sentence and get it, his train back on thought. What happens when he's actually in an intensely adversarial environment with a moderator and with another candidate? It's, it's becoming... Difficult to imagine him successfully doing that. Maybe it won't matter, but yeah, it, it, you're talking about you know the risk yeah. in changing. But there's and now there's a risk at at keeping him. That is a huge risk exactly. because he's losing in every swing state. Exactly. And if democracy really is on the ballot, what are Democrats doing with this historically unpopular and worrisome choice? Yeah, more rising right after this.